WatchOS 10 has probably seen the biggest change out of any of Apple's operating systems this year with a huge UI overhaul, added features, and performance improvements. And now with the release of the new watches, we can finally get our hands on the public release. I've been using the beta release for a little while now, digging into some of this new stuff. Some of it is definitely useful, but it's not always easy to know how everything works or where to find everything. And the way that you use the watch has definitely changed. So today I'm diving into watchOS 10, going over how to use everything in here and where to tweak a lot of these options and give you a full rundown on this release. So if you're interested in watchOS 10, maybe you bought one of the new Apple watches or you're just updating the one that you've got, stick around and let's get into it. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. We got a first look at watchOS 10 all the way back in June at WWDC. There's been a bunch of beta releases since then slowly trickling out with new features, but the time has finally come where this is polished enough that it's being released out into the public. I'd been kind of avoiding all these beta versions up until a few weeks ago, just because there's usually some performance issues associated with that that can result in poor battery life. And I just didn't want the hassle of having to charge my watch more than I already do, but I did want to get a bit of a jump so I could consolidate my experience and run through what watchOS has to offer into something digestible for everyone. So enough about that, let's just get right into things. First things first, the first thing that you're going to notice on any Apple Watch is the watch faces where there are a couple of new options here. The one that I've got here is this Nike one where there is a decent color selection. You've also got another watch face named Palette where there are loads of different colors. The Apple Watch Ultra has an exclusive modular ultra watch face. And finally, there's a Snoopy option where there's a couple of different styles of the numbers and hands. There's always some new watch faces every year, but the way that you change or edit the faces is quite different. It used to be that you could just swipe left or right to change the face, which I've never liked to be honest, but now I've got to hold down on the watch face where I can scroll through the ones that I've added and I can just swipe up to delete them. Another screen you're probably used to seeing a lot of on the watch is the app screen where you can see and select any of your Apple Watch apps, which has changed a little bit. If you click on your digital crown, you can see on the surface, it looks the same, but instead of it reaching out in every direction like it did before, in sort of that hexagon pattern, it's now confined horizontally, so you'll just scroll vertically through all of them. I can press and hold on the screen to enter jiggle mode or whatever the watchOS equivalent of jiggle mode is, where I can drag these icons around or remove them. Or if you don't like this view at all, you can hit the list view button to turn it into more of a traditional list of apps. Some other pretty standard gestures and controls have changed as well. Swiping up used to bring up the control center where you'd see your battery life and wireless icons and your hardware toggles, that kind of thing. But now you'll notice it brings up what's called the smart stack. To me, this feels very similar to the little menu bar that pops out of the right hand side on Mac OS if you click the time in the menu bar. Inside there, you'll now have access to widgets and things like reminders if you have something playing, that will also show up there. To edit this again, you'll just hold down on the screen where you can drag these around, remove them or pin them. Pinning them basically just locks them into place if you don't want them to switch positions. I can also hit the plus button at the top to add a new widget. Nothing overly complex, but I do find this quite useful for things that you use frequently. Now, if you want to access the control center that this gesture took over, you can now do that by pressing the button below your watch crown, where you'll get all the same info, just shown in a little bit nicer UI. You'll see the background has this blurry translucent look to it, where it almost looks layered over the watch face, where before it was just black, and you'll see similar changes in various parts of the watch UI. I've got my battery percentage in there, which is what I tend to look at in here the most, and one feature that's new that's related to battery life is something called Optimized Charge Limit, which was released last year in watchOS 9 for the Apple Watch Ultra, but is now coming to the Apple Watch SE and the Series 6 and above. Essentially what this does is learn from your daily usage and determine when it should charge to a certain limit and when it should do a full charge, which is supposed to maximize your battery health over time. Something that I could have used in the last year or two because the battery in the Series 6 is toast. That is enabled by default, but if the watch ever decides to charge to say 80% or something like that and you want to go to a full 100, all you need to do is click the little charging icon while it's on the charger and there will be a charge to full option in here. Beyond that, we've got some new health features. The health app can now track how much time you spend outdoors a day and that's done by using the ambient sensors in the watch that determine how much time you've spent in daylight or sunlight. You might hear people refer to this as the touch grass feature, which is kind of geared towards preventing myopia or nearsightedness in children, but I think we all know people who could use a quick reminder to touch grass every now and then. There's also the introduction of state of mind in the mindfulness app that's also on iOS 17 where you can log how you're currently feeling. This is basically just a mood tracking feature if you're into that sort of thing. 
You can choose what you're feeling during that specific time or day and help identify any patterns between your mental and physical health. As far as the physical health side, there have been some additions to workouts specifically for cyclists and hikers. The Apple Watch can now connect to Bluetooth accessories to show advanced cycling metrics and your workout while cycling will now show up as a live activity on your iPhone provided that your iPhone does show a lot of activities. Not something that I personally use, but I'm sure there are some folks that will. Now for hiking, your watch can now send you elevation alerts, and there are some changes to the compass and maps in relation to that as well. You can see if I'm in my compass app, it will now show elevation. If I click on the information icon, I can set an elevation target to get those notifications that I just mentioned. And the maps app has seen a bit of an overhaul as well, where you'll see topographic maps with trails, elevation, and so on. I can't actually see most of these things, on my watch because I'm in Canada and I believe right now that is limited to the United States. So if you live in a supported area, you can pop in there and check it out. Still, the overall UI in that app has changed, as have most first party apps. I'm not gonna go through every app and show you all the changed UI because I don't know that there's really much value in it. But some of the patterns that you'll see is the change from smaller scrolling panels to full watch face displays that are scrollable like in the activity app. Another common thing that you'll see is clickable icons in the corners on a lot of apps like the activity app and maps app. And again, you'll see a lot more of these translucent overlays like in the control center or smart stack. In my opinion, it just feels like the design language in watchOS is a lot closer to iOS 17 and there's a little bit less separation between the two now. The last few things I probably won't use a ton in here that are worth mentioning. The new name drop feature where you can share your contact info where you can just tap or bring your watch close to another watch or an iPhone to share contact info will be included in here. There's a lockdown mode for people with sensitive information like government officials or journalists that protects against targeted cyberware attacks or spyware and things of that nature and group FaceTime audio calls are now supported. I rarely ever use FaceTime on my iPhone, let alone my watch, but if that's something that you use a lot, you might find that useful. All in all, I think this is a pretty big overhaul visually with some pretty handy new features as well. For me personally, I really like that they rethought the gestures and the buttons while you're changing the watch face. Oftentimes, I'd have accidentally swiped over to another watch face when I didn't mean to, so not having that problem anymore is nice. And I think switching the functionality around of the gestures on the home screen and the side button makes a lot more sense. That's just me though. I would love to know what everyone else thinks here. What is your favorite feature in watchOS 10? Drop a comment down below and let me know. That's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. If you didn't and I upset you or hurt your feelings, please update your watch to watchOS 10 and use that touch grass feature. If you want to see more tech related videos or have a staring contest while hula hooping, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.